Hi everybody. I thought it might be helpful as you're working on cases two and three for Friday if I walked you through a case so that you could see what kind of things I'm looking for as far as evidence and um, it'll also give you a formula for free when it comes to the area. So this is case number five. Of course the first thing you want to do is plot the points and I have the benefit of being able to zoom in and I'm sorry you can't do that on your paper because I know those grids are tiny. Um, point A at negative 10, negative 7 is going to be, two, four, seven. at least they do count by twos, they kind of darken every other one so you can count by twos sometimes. Um, and I labeled them because you're going to need to refer to them. Um, B is negative 2 negative 1. So B is up here. Uh, C is 6, negative 7. So 2, 4, 6, 2, 4, 6, 7. And that is point C. And then D at negative 2, negative 13. So negative 2, then 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 13. Okay, so there's our figure. And a lot of times you have a hunch as to what it is when you graph it. So I'm thinking that this looks like a rhombus. So in order to prove that it's a rhombus, I can do one of at least two different things. Uh, rhombuses have all four sides congruent. So I could do the distance formula for all four sides. Or I could show that it is a parallelogram by showing that there are two sets of parallel sides and then show that the diagonals are perpendicular. So that's another way to show that a quadrilateral is a rhombus. And I'm going to do the second one with the two sets of parallel sides and then the diagonals perpendicular. Um, you could do Either one. If you prefer the distance formula, you can do that for all four of the sides. So to show that things are parallel, I need their slopes. So I need to find the slope of AB. And you can either count that on the graph, you know, one, two, three, four, however far up and then however far over. Or you can use the points that are there and use the formula y minus y over x minus x. I'm going to use the points because sometimes it's hard to count because those squares are so tiny. So I'm going to do negative 7 minus negative 1 over, and then I have to use that same order, negative 10 minus negative 2. So negative 7 minus a negative 1 is a negative 6, then 10 minus a negative 2 is negative 8. So that simplifies to 3 fourths for AB. And then I'm going to find the slope of CD because the, that's opposite AB, so I want that slope to be the same. So then I'll use these two points and do the Y minus the Y, so negative 7 minus negative 13 over 6 minus negative 2. And I like to change those. I didn't do it the first time, but go back and do that. So negative 7 plus 13 gives you 6, and then on the bottom, 6 minus a negative 2. 6 plus 2 is 8, so that is 3 fourths. So those two are parallel. So I'm going to mark that on the graph, that those two are parallel. And then I need to do that same thing for the other two sets. So I'm going to do BC first. 
So that's going to be negative 1 minus negative 7, and then negative 2 minus 6. So that would give us a 6 on the top and a negative 8 on the bottom. So that's a negative 3 fourths. Um, then you need to do that same thing for AD. So AD is negative 7 minus negative 13 over negative 10 minus negative 2. So that's going to give us a positive 6 on the top and a negative 8 on the bottom. So negative 3 fourths again, so those two are parallel. Now at that point, you've only proven that it's a parallelogram. That does not prove that it's a rhombus. So we need something additional. And for that, I'm going to do the diagonals and show that they are perpendicular, which you can also do with slope. So I'm going to draw them in here. Um, for this one, they turn out to be one's horizontal and one's vertical. So if you recognize that, you can just say AC is horizontal and BD is vertical and horizontal lines are perpendicular to vertical lines. Um, I'm going to show the slope anyway, just extra practice. And they're not always going to be horizontal and vertical. Um, so the slope of AC, so we get to do pretty much all the combinations. So that's going to be negative 7 minus negative 7 over negative 10 minus 6. And what you find is the top is 0 because it is a horizontal line. So it really doesn't even matter what the bottom is as long as it's not also 0, which couldn't happen anyway. But So that's 0. It's horizontal. And then we're going to need to do BD. And I'm out of room. I'll lose B if I slide up too far. Um, BD is negative 1 minus negative 13 over negative 2 minus negative 2. And so for that, we get the 0 on the bottom which is not allowed as far as the slope goes. So it's undefined, which means that it's vertical. Um, that would give you a 12 on the top, not that it matters. Uh, but that means that these two are perpendicular. So the diagonals are perpendicular. So therefore, it's a rhombus. As far as the area goes, um, there is an area formula for a rhombus, and I don't know if it's in your book somewhere. They don't talk about it in this chapter that I recall. So it might be in your book somewhere else, or you can look these up. A lot of the times they have a formula that you can find online. Um, I'm gonna give it to you here. So rhombus area is one half of the product of the diagonals. So we need to find the lengths of the diagonals. Now because they are horizontal and vertical, we can count them. Uh, and it's not too difficult to count those. You could, you know, sit there and count those. Or you can use the distance formula to figure that out. If they are not vertical or horizontal, you'll have to use the distance formula. Um, but here we don't have to. So one half times, I'm going to do the short diagonal first, BD, it's 12. And the longer diagonal, AC, is 16. So if you multiply all of those together, you get 96. And these are just square units. We don't know if they're centimeters or inches. They didn't label anything. So then you would write 96 square units or units squared, your choice. So that's the sort of thing that I'm looking for. You're not always going to have the exact same evidence. You're not always going to have to find the slopes. Sometimes you need to find the distances, the lengths 
of the sides. Um, if you're working on case two and case three and have any questions, feel free to email me and I'll get back to you as quickly as I can. So thank you. Have a great day.